The PICA project that we're currently working on is a great example of collaboration with outside private researchers. All the information they give us is extremely beneficial to the park. There's just a passion from really, really deep within. I mean, when you, when you get out here, you work really hard to make it, you know, to these areas. And um, when you hear your first pika and you, you can watch its behavior and, and you feel good about collecting really sound, 100% meticulous data and submitting that and saying, hey, this is what's going on out here. I mean, there's, there's no other feeling like it. It's, it's incredible. So we just got a pika location and we're going to run a habitat transect. Uh, we have our transect rope which is 25 meters long. Pika territories are about 25 meters in radius. And the other thing is we have another temperature meter. Just manufacture, um, kind of create one meter by one meter squared plots using just some uh, standard ruler sticks to kind of delineate the boundary of a, what we're going to be recording. Kind of use the meter stick and also probe down and just find what is the maximum depth within the plot. So. This one would actually be about 58 inches. And then we'll also set up a temperature meter to record the temperature at the depth. The temperatures, we wait for them to stabilize. We end up actually classifying the vegetation into fairly broad categories. These are yeah, all ahead. considered bryophytes, this moss here. And then we also have some lichens in here. So we'll also record that as a cover type. Sometimes there'll be shrubs, forbs, cushion plants when we get into higher elevation sites, but anything that we see within our plot will record. Pikas could be an indicator of climate change um, in part because of their sensitivity to high temperatures. They take refuge underneath the cool surface of the boulders, but if you actually have increasing temperatures, uh, and if they increase quite a bit, you could actually see behavioral changes in pikas because they need a certain amount of time to forage. They also collect vegetation to put in their hay piles for winter forage because they don't hibernate. As you might just see them having very limited times to meet their foraging uh, requirements and energy, energy requirements for summer and winter. And that you know, ultimately would have a negative impact on their survival. You see some really amazing things from up here um, that you could never really put into words, you almost have to be here to see it. And um, I could, you know, I could write a book on, on why I continue to do this work, but it's just, uh, it's incredible to be a part of, of protecting this land and, you know, species and, and habitat and things that are really important 